talk about the engine anion system. And the engine bleeder thermal anion prevents the formation of ice on the engine cowl lid. Engine anion operation is controlled by individual engine anion switches. And you can see them here. The engine anion system may be operated on the ground and in flight. The on position opens the engine cowl anion valve. So this switch in on opens this valve here. An engine bleeder goes to the cowl lip. So you can see the red line. This is bleeder going to the cowl lip. Each cowl anion valve is electrically controlled and pressure actuated. Positioning the engine anion switch to on allows engine bleeder to flow through the cowl anion valve for cowl lip anion sets stall warning logic for icing conditions. There is a, a couple of notes here. It says uh, stall warning logic adjusts stick shaker and minimum maneuver speed bars on the air speed indicator. FMC, which is a flight management com computer, displayed VREF is not adjusted automatically. The other note says stall warning logic, air speed indications, and minimum maneuver speeds on this air speed indicator return to normal when engine anion is positioned to off if wind anion has not been used in flight. Something I found interesting to know is that according to the MRG, when anion is used, fuel consumption per hour increases by so you can see here, if we have engine anion only, the fuel consumption per hour increases by 45 kilograms or 100 pounds. If we're using both engine and wind anion, it increases by 140 kilograms or 310 pounds. So keep that in mind when you're flying in uh, icing conditions. The engine anion must be on during all ground and flight operations when icing conditions exist or are respected. When engine anion is required, first turn the engine to start switches to continuous. Okay, now that we know about the engine anion system, let's talk about the panel and controls uh, we have in the forward overhead panel. And you can see here we have the engine anion switches off and on positions and we have the lights an amber light the cowl and the ice and uh, the blue light cowl valve open uh, let's talk about each of them the cowl and the ice lights they indicate an overpressure condition in duct downstream of engine cowl and the ice valve now we'll talk about the cowl valve open light bright Related cowl and the ice valve is in transit or cowl and the ice valve position disagrees with related engine and the ice switch position. Then the related cowl and the ice valve is open. Switch on. Extinguished related cowl and the ice valve is closed with the switch off. Now we'll talk about the switches. As we mentioned before, we have the off and we have the on position. In on position here, the related cowl and the ice valve is open. A stitch shaker logic is set for icing conditions. And the green TAI, which is thermal and the ice indication, shows on the engine display. Okay, here you can see. Let's do it again so you can see. That's when the TAI comes on, thermal and the ice indicator. Now that we are talking about the thermal and the ice indication, uh, let's mention that when it is green, and remember, if we put the engine and the ice on, you are going to see it green right there. Uh, it means that the cowl and the ice valves are open. Now, if that light goes amber, 
it means that the cowl anti ice valve is not in position indicated by related engine anti ice switch. Okay, in the off position, related cowl anti ice valve is closed. The stick shaker logic returns to normal if wind anti ice has not been used in flight. And the green TAI indication on the engine display extinguishes. So you can notice that the indication is not there. Okay, now let's talk about the wind and the ice panel. And you can see it next to the engine and the ice. And it has two positions off and on. And we have two lights saying the left valve open and right valve open. Let's talk about those lights. The wind and the ice valve open light, when it's bright, the related wind and the ice control valve is in transit, or related wind and the ice control valve position disagrees with the wind and the ice switch position. When, when the light is dim, the related wind and the ice control valve is open, switch on, and when it's extinguished, the related wind and the ice control valve is closed, switch off. Now, if we talk about the positions of the switch, in off, uh, the wind and the ice control valves are closed. And if we put on in the air, in the air, the wind and the ice control valves are open and the stick shaker logic is set for icing conditions. The stick shaker logic remains set for icing conditions for the remainder of the flight, regardless of subsequent wind and the ice switch position. Now, when we talk about this switch in on, on the ground, it means that the wind and the ice control valves open if thrust in both engines is below takeoff warning setting and temperature inside both distribution ducts is below thermal switch activation temperature. If control, uh, control valves close if either engine thrust is above takeoff warning setting or thermal switch is activated in either distribution duct. Switch remains on. Switch trips off at lift off. Now let's talk about the wind and the ice system on the Boeing 737. And here to the right side, you can see the diagram uh, we can find in FCON volume two about the wind and the ice system. So here uh, we have the three inboard leading edge lats and this is the wind and the ice control valve for both sides. So let's talk about it. Uh, the wind and the ice system provides protection for the three inboard leading edge slats by using bleeder. The wind and the ice system does not include the leading edge flaps or the outboard leading edge slats. The wind and the ice control valves are AC motor operated with a valve open Bleed air flows to the three leading edge inboard slats and is then exhausted overboard. The wind and the ice system is effective with the slats in any position. On the ground, positioning the wind and the ice switch on opens both control valves if thrust on both engines is below the setting for takeoff warning activation. And the temperature inside both wind distribution ducts is less than the thermal switch activation temperature. Both valves close if either engine thrust is above the takeoff warning setting or either temperature sensor senses a duct over temperature. With the air ground sensor in the ground mode, and here in the diagram you can see the air ground safety sensors, ground and air, and the wind and the eye switch on, the switch remains in the on position regardless of control valve position. The wind and the ice switch automatically trips off at liftoff when the air ground sensor goes to the air mode. Positioning the wind and the ice switch to on in flight opens both control valves, sets a stall warning logic for ice and conditions. Note. Stall warning logic adjusts the stick shaker and minimum maneuver speed bars on air speed indications. FMC displayed VREF is not adjusted automatically. The other note says 
The store warning logic remains set for icing conditions for the remainder of the flight, regardless of subsequent wind and ice switch position.